Kirk Santayan and I was assigned to report um after the migration so I was assigned to report the topic benefits and determinants for the sending countries it's still part of the lesson 10 or chapter 10 which is global migration even if 90% of value generated by migrant workers remains in their host countries, they have sent billions back to their home countries. In 2014, their total remittances totaled 580 billion US dollar. So kahit andun pa rin si, or kahit andun nang sa sarili ng bansa, yung pera na napapadala nila is malaki pa rin ang halaga. So we have these four countries um, which have a huge amount of remittances. So the first one is the India, which cost 70 billion US dollar. The second one is the China, which cost 62 billion US dollar. And the third one is our own country, which is the Philippines, cost 28 billion US dollar. And the last one is the Mexico, which cost 25 billion US dollar. Remittances is um the process or the financial process in which yung mga OFW nagpapadala ng pera sa pamilya nila na nasa bansa kung saan sila nagmula. So remittances change the economic and social standing of migrants as shown by new or renovated home and the relatives access to new consumer of goods. So yung remittances nagpapabago sa buhay ng nakakatanggap ng pera kasi Yung, ma yung pera na nakukuha lang mula sa nagpadala is huge amount na din. So, madami na silang nabibili or madami na silang nagagawa doon sa pera. The purchasing power of a migrant's family doubles and make it possible for the children to start or continue their schooling. So, yung OFW parents or yung OFW relatives, yung pera na, na, na galing sa pinaghirapan nila is for schooling talaga or madala sa ma binibigay talaga doon sa mga anak for having a, para magkaroon ng better future. Yet, there remain a serious concerns about the economic sustainability of those reliant migrant monies. So kahit na advantage yung remittances, kung nakadepende lang or kung nag-stick lang doon sa remittances na money or yung sa mga pinapadalang per, may disadvantage din. So according to the Asian Development Bank or ADB observes that in the countries like Philippines, which is our own country, remittances do not have significant influence on other key items of consumption or investments, such as spending in education and health care. Remittances, therefore, may help in lifting households out of poverty, poverty, but not in a balancing growth, especially in the long run. Kasi yung mga pera na napapadala maaring nakakaangat sa buhay ng pamilya, pero hindi din dun sa pamatagal ang angat kasi yung mga Pinoy, mas nagagasta nila yung pera sa di naman anong malagalik. Yung sa mga tumatanggap, mas naunang bilhin yung gadgets kaysa ipunin para sa magandang kinabukasan. More importantly, global migration is supporting qualified personnel and removing dynamic young workers. This process is often referred to as brain drain. Brain drain or brain waste, ito yung uh, tungkol sa Isang tao na nakapagtapos ng isang degree, pero yung degree na natapos nila is hindi connected dun sa naging trabaho nila sa ibang bansa. So, this is the detriments or the disadvantage or harm on having this global migration. According again to the Mackenzie Global Institute, countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia have lost one-third of their college graduates. 60% of those who moved the OECD destinations were college graduates compared to just 9% of overall population. So ito yung mga nagtapos sa isang bansa pero mas piniling mag-serve or mag sa ibang bansa. So parang nawawala ng professionals, individuals yung isang bansa kasi mas pinili nila dun sa ibang bansa mag 52% of the Filipinos who live for work in the developed world have tertiary education which is more than double the 23% of overall population. So yung mga Filipino kahit Anong degree yung natapos nila? Kahit gaano kalaki yung degree na natapos nila? Kung mas malaking opportunity ang nakikita nila sa ibang bansa, mas pipiliin at pipiliin nila magsapalaran doon sa, makipagsapalaran doon sa ibang bansa. Furthermore, the loss of professionals in certain care roles such as doctors has been determined to the migrants home countries. So, determined ito yung word na harm. Determined. So, yung mga bansa kung saan nagaling yung mga nag-migrate is harm sa kanila yung 
ganitong pamamalakad kasi yung mga professionals na dapat sa sarili ng bansa mag-serve is mas pinili mag-serve sa ibang bansa. Like, In 2006, some 15% of locally trained doctors from 21 sub-Saharan African countries had immigrated to the United States or Canada. The losses were particularly step in Liberia, where 43% of doctors left Ghana, 33%, and Uganda, 20%. So, we all know that the United States and Canada is a huge countries. So, andun yung malaking establishments, especially in medication or the hospital establishments. So, mas, siguro mas pinili ng mga nakapagtapos ng doktor na doon mag-serve Kasi mas malaking opportunity, mas mala, maraming trabaho ang mag-open sa kanila kasi madaming hospitals sa counters na yun. Maybe they, uh, they saw that um, their future will be better if they will serve in the other countries like United States and Canada. Government are aware of this long-term handicap but no choice but to continue promoting migrant works as part of the state policy because of the remittances impact on GDP. So, kapag nagpapadala yung mga OFW sa Pilipina ni, sa, sa pamilya nila, which is nasa home countries nila, is may natatanggap yung bansa kung saan sila nagmula mula din sa remittances na pinapadala nila. They are equally concerned with generating jobs for an underutilized workforce and getting the maximum possible inflow of worker remittances. So, ito yung the government Yung way na government na papapawdala ng mga overseas workers is para din mabawasan yung unemployment rate sa isang bansa. So, ito yung advantage na disadvantage kasi nababawasan yung unemployment rate pero nababawasan din yung mga professionals, ano, um, professionals um, bilang ng mga professionals na mga tao kasi mas pinili nga nila na sa ibang bansa mag-migrate or para mag-work. Government are thus actively involved in the recruitment and development of works, some of them setting up social departments like Bureau of Manpower Employment and Training of Bangladesh, Office of the Protector of Immigrants within the India Labor, and last is the Philippine Hours Employment Agency of OEA. Ito yung mga agen- agencies na nagahandle sa mga overseas workers na gustong magtrabaho sa ibang bansa. Sila din yung nakakatanggap na part sa mga remittances na pinapadala ng OFW. So, the sustainability of migrant-dependent economies will partially depend on the start of these institutions. Kung yung mga institutions, yung tatlong institutions na sasabi ko or sa iba pa institutions is magiging mahina. Magiging mahina din yung economy ng bansa kasi sa kanila naka, ano, nakadepende kung gaano kalakas yung economy din ng bansa. So, kahit may advantage dito, isipin din natin na yung mga migrants families is magkakaroon ng disadvantage kasi mas naku, nagkaka, eh, nababawasan ng atensyon para sa pamilya kasi mas pinili ng kunya ng tatay o nanay na magtagbaw sa ibang bansa imbis na magstay sa sariling bansa para makasama yung pamilya. So, that is for my report and I hope you've learned something. So, Again, this is Roxanne Tayan. I'm discussing about the benefits and detriments of the, um, about global migration of the sending countries. So thank you for listening and God bless us all.